Welcome back to Learning JavaScript with me, your host, Paul Baumgutter. All right, by popular request today, we are going to be making a bit of a Pac-Man game. Not quite a full Pac-Man game, but uh, most of a Pac-Man game. And there's a couple of aspects to it that would be a little complicated for right now. But we can get the overall picture happening. So let's get underway. Uh, it would be a good exercise to teach you about arrays as well, which is fantastic. Uh, so I might actually just quickly start with a brief introduction to an array. Uh, when I'm saying array, uh, I'm talking a double r a y, and an array, uh, which can be the hung time. An array is basically a variable, same as we've been using before, but one where that we can store multiple values attached to the same name. Uh, we might use arrays in calculations, for instance. So if I had a series of numbers that I wanted to find the mean or average of, uh, in JavaScript, with what we've been doing so far, we might have, have a variable called A, and give this a number 50, a variable called B, give this 35, a variable called C, give this, don't code this out by the way, this is just an explanation. Uh, D, this 10, whatever, and I could keep on going. And if I wanted to know the average of th these numbers, then I would have to ha calculate the sum, which would be A plus B plus C plus D, all right? And then the average would be the sum divided by 4. And if I was to, uh, not console, <laughs> command dot write that out, uh, I get 38.75, which is probably what the average is, I should hope. Now, uh, we can see quite quickly that this would, could get quite limiting uh, and quite tedious, you know, especially if I was calculating the mean for a large number of numbers. Uh, I'd have to be writing them all out, each one getting their own name, and then here in the sum I'd have to... And then if I wanted to do any other calculations, I'd have to refer to each number individually all the time. However, using an array, I can have, uh, let's call it R for short for array. I can't use the full word array because that's a reserved word. In JavaScript, it has special meaning, so we'll just use R. Uh, okay. And I use square brackets to indicate that this is going to be an array. And I could type 50, 35, 60, 10 into my square brackets. And if I want to know the sum, I can just for loop through my array. Uh, i equals zero. i less than array dot length. i is equal to i plus one. And if I've got something that's for my sum, I'm going to explain the for loop in a sec, don't I? Equals zero. Sum is equal to whatever the sum was plus array. And I want the ith number of the array, calculate them all up, and then average is equal to the sum divided by the array length. Command.write with write. Average. Okay, and okay, 38.75 again. All right, so let's just quickly explain what's going on here. So the for loop. I can't remember if, if we've explained the for loop before or not, uh, but basically the first, all right, so you see that there's three sections to the for loop. And each is separated by these semicolons. Let's put spaces in here to make them obvious. Okay, so the front part. This is a this is a JavaScript statement that we want JavaScript to execute as we start processing this loop. So create a, a variable called i and set its number to zero. Right, so that's just as if I had have done this. 
Now, before I start the for loop, create this thing called i. So I, you can actually, if you want, add an empty space there if you've got the equivalent out the top here. Okay, it, functionally, it does exactly the same thing. All right, but I'll put it here just because I'm like that way. All right, the second part is like the inside of the brackets of an if statement. We're saying keep running the for loop while this is true. So while i is less than this thing, r dot length. Okay. Uh, and what is r dot length? Uh, it is a special thing that exists. So we have this array and a dot length on it simply says how many items are in it. So in this case, dot length will be saying four. And then the third part here is what do we want to happen at the end of each cycle in the loop? All right, so this is as if I had down in here a line that just said this. All right, I've hit the end of my loop, and now I'm going to increase my counting variable, which is the letter i in this case. Okay, Again, exactly the same functionality. Uh, so a for loop, all right, so that for loop is actually the same as if I had used, I can also use a while loop, I could have said, that while i is less than array dot length. Okay, do whatever I want to do, and then i is equal to i plus one. Right? It's exactly the same code, they perform exactly the same thing. The for loop just does it in one line, whereas the while loop requires three lines. Okay, uh, the three lines are actually still here, it's just that they're separated by these semicolons. Okay, so, uh, so we're looping through this array, and now the benefit is I can just type extra numbers in, so let's get rid of this old one. Right, instead of having to create new variables and everything else, I can just create uh, whatever I want in here. And it will automatically adjust and recalculate it. It will adjust the length. And so the sum gets recalculated each time and we get a new average. In this case, 142.9. And if I put in an big number, that should skew the average somewhat. All right, add a couple more zeros. All right, we can see that we start getting in the realm of silliness. Okay, that is what an array is anyway. <laughs> and we will use an array in our Pac-Man game. But first of all, let's do some of what we already know and have done before. Let's create a little Pac-Man character and have him moving around the screen. So just as previously, we will have a document add event listener. Listener. All right, looking for the key down event. And we will execute a function called move Pac-Man. All right, so we'll need to create ourselves a move Pac-Man. All right, um, actually, before I get any further, let's let's conjure up a bit of a to-do list here, shall we? All right, so we need to, what do we need to do to make up a Pac-Man game? We need to draw our Pac-Man character. We need to have a ghost. So drawing our ghost character, we've got to have someone chasing us. Uh, we've got to uh, move our Pac-Man by the keyboard, using the keyboard. Uh, move the ghost to follow Pac-Man. Uh, we need some walls that stop Pac-Man's movement. Okay, a scene that he has to chase through. And we need some food for Pac-Man to eat. What else do we need? That'll do for now. Let's, okay, we can, uh, if, or if the ghost catches Pac-Man, game over. All right, and score equals how much food we ate. All right, let's walk, work ourselves through that, shall we? Okay, so let's, yeah. 
And so draw in our Pac-Man character and we will make him move. Okay. So now just as I as did with the previous one, um, let's use a couple of variables to store where Pac-Man is. Pac. And X, and let's plonk him in the middle of the screen, shall we? Um, to 25, sounds good. Pack and uh, pack man Y, and let's put it that also to 25. Now, I, thinking ahead, I know that I'm going to need a timer because I'm going to need my ghost chasing my Pac Man, uh, and I'm going to use my timer. I'm on loop to draw where Pac-Man is. So, um, because I want all the drawing to happen in the same place, and it's easier for that just to automatically happen 25 times a second rather than waiting for me to press a key. So, I'll create a function, draw Pac-Man. And Shall we give it? No, we don't need to give it an x, y coordinate because we can just get it from this Pac-Man variable. All right, so draw our Pac-Man, and let's just, for now we'll keep it, keep using the simple shapes that we have been using. Um, once we move out of coding with Chrome, um, I will, it'll be a lot easier then to start using more complicated shapes. Uh, so uh, that's only um, not too many lessons away. So for now, we'll just stick with simple shapes to, to represent our characters, okay? But uh, by coding this way, we will be able to easily change it later on when the time comes. So we'll draw a Pac-Man uh, just with a circle for now. All right, and let's make up a move Pac-Man screen, oh, sorry, function. And we know that the E represents the event. Okay, I could call it event if I wanted. Uh, and the event is the key has been pressed down. So this E variable contains the key codes of what's been pressed. So just like last time, E.keyCode. If the key that was pressed was key code 37, that is the left arrow. So we'll change Pac-Man's X position. And well, let's move him 50 each turn. Otherwise, else if E. Dot Key code equals 38. That's the up arrow, so Pac-Man's Y position needs to go up. Else if E dot key code equals 39 is the right arrow, so Pac-Man's X position needs to increase. Else if E dot key code equals 40, which is the down arrow. So the Y value needs to increase. All right, uh, so let's just get draw pack man running. And we should get a pack man that will move. And it won't move yet because I've got to add the timer. This only executes once. It needs to keep re-executing. I could just put this command in here for now so we can see it taking effect. Okay. Um, now, just like last time, we're going to need to erase our screen each move. So let's just set up this timer. We know we're going to need it anyway. So I'll take that out of there. Set interval loop 40, okay, 40 milliseconds or 25 times a second again. Function loop draw pack man. All right, and now I've got my pack man and he's drawn 25 times a second. Let's uh, erase the screen. All right, we'll do each time as well. Okay, so, oh, lost my mouse, there we are. All right, so clear screen, blue, 
let's put comments in so we know what our code is doing when we're trying to check it later on. Draw a rectangle. Uh, and let's just make this game be 500 pixels for now. We can use the automatic set width and height later on. All right, but now, 25 times a second, we have our moving Pac-Man. Okay. Let's get a ghost chasing us, shall we? So function, draw ghost. Okay, and the reason I'm putting these in separate functions uh, is so that I can just change the inside of this later on and it will automatically update for when I use some fancy graphics later on uh, when we moved out of coding with Chrome. So, uh, let's actually, before we do that, we're going to need some ghost variables. Let's make our ghost start in the top, near the top left corner. Uh, and you'll notice I'm using offsets of 25, and there's a reason for that, okay? Trust me. Yes. Okay, so draw a ghost. How about we draw another circle? All right, ghost X, ghost Y, maybe 20 for the ghost, and we'll make him magenta. Let's make, we can actually make this look a little more ghost like just by also adding in a rectangle. Uh, ghost x minus 20, ghost y 40, 20, and magenta. How do I mean that it's going to look a little more ghost like? Well, let's put it into our loop. Draw ghost. And there you go. <laughs> We've drawn a circle and then we draw a rectangle over the bottom half of it. So now this looks like a, well, kind of like a ghost. All right, and I mean, you know, if you really wanted to, you could go all out and you could add some eyes to it. Draw circle. Okay, so uh, let's see, ghost x minus, ooh, what would we offset? Let's say about six. Because uh, remember, ghost x goes y is the center of the circle of the ghost. So ghost x minus six, I don't know, how big would an eye be? Uh, radius of two that makes it for in diameter a white eye with a black background, black edging. And look at that, we've got ourselves a little eye. Um, maybe if what happens if I make that a three? Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's put in another eye for this one. Eye ghosts are never fun. Uh, ghost plus the X there, there we go. You can obviously give eyes and whatever you want to your Pac-Man as well. I'll let you experiment with that. All right, uh, now we need our ghost to be chasing Pac-Man. And as we saw last week, okay, with the dot chasing the, the dot, that's fairly straightforward as well. Let's just put all this in a separate function. Move ghost. Okay, so if the Pac-Man's exposition is bigger than the ghost's exposition, then we want to change the ghost exposition to be larger. Let's make him jump by 50 at a time. Uh, if Pac-Man's X is less than ghost X, then ghost x, x is equal to ghost x minus 50. And we'll do the same with the two y values. Token, what error have I made? Oh, that's probably that. You never make errors. What are you talking about? Um, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? The problem with 
pain with Chrome is it doesn't give you a line number where it's having an easy fit. And it says unexpected token open brackets. Um, do, 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 do. Have you spotted my error yet? Uh, if you're a good student, you would have. No, it does, um, there's no error when I get rid of that. No, so the error is definitely in here somewhere. What have I done? Uh, open square or okay, brace. One closes. That one closes. This is the kind of error checking you need to get in the habit of being able to do. That closes that. 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 Why is there an unexpected token? What's it? If back then just exit. Ah, yeah, else if. Hope you spotted it. There we go. Now, let's make him move. So into our loop. Now, here's, here's a, yeah, yes, this is going to be interesting. If I put move ghost here, watch what happens. Yeah, no, <laughs> he chases us a little too fast. So I'm not going to put it here. I'm going to get that, that and I'm going to give it its own interval. Set interval. I don't want the ghost moving 25 times a second. Uh, so move, run the move ghost function. Twice a second, it goes to, it needs to move twice a second. Let's we'll see what that does. See, that's more manageable. Pac-Man can manage that a bit better. Uh, in fact, so our Pac-Man character should be moving. Oops, if I'm, there we go. Uh, uh, and I, <laughs> okay, what happened there is I went outside my 25, oh, sorry, my 500 square rectangle. The ghost still chasing me out there. All right, so maybe rather than making this 500, 500, I really should make this window dot inner width and window dot inner height. Now it looks like I move through the full thing. Okay, so we've got a ghost chasing us, and we're pretty well where we were last week. Except the ghost isn't coming down because let's make put the equal signs on these things. Um, all right. Uh, simply because ghost has to keep moving. There's no not an option for it to not move at the moment. Yeah, right. it's close enough for now. Let's move on, shall we? The next thing we need to do is to draw some walls, okay? Because Pac-Man, you have to move through the obstacles, eat the food, and avoid getting captured by the ghost. So we need some walls for the Pac-Man to move in. Uh, so let's create a new function for this as well. Draw walls. Okay, and we'll put that in as part of our loop. So after we clear the screen, we'll draw the walls. And then we'll draw the Pac-Man, and then we'll draw the ghost. So draw walls. Now, I was going to stick to 500 by 500. Uh, now, here's some walls I prepared earlier. <laughs> I suggest you, okay, you can either pause and copy out my walls, uh, and or feel free to make some of your own. All right. So the walls I have created look like that. Okay, so I've just got on these draw line functions. Uh, I've got the external edge, I've got some horizontal lines, and I've got some vertical lines. Feel free to make your own. Okay, pause this video, do that. And when you're ready to continue, hit play again. All right, welcome back. So I'm curious to know what walls you've got. These are the ones that I will stick with for now. Now, what's happened to my Pac-Man eyes? Why did he go? 
I think it's because here in the lines where I've, I've set a width to six, so I need to re-specify that I want a line width of one. Yeah, and that fixes up his eyes. Okay. So for some reason, Conan's Chrome remembers what width the lines were, were at last. All right. So I've got my walls. Now let's make it so. Right, but at the moment, the walls are there, but they have no effect on anyone. And you can see why I was offsetting everything by 25. So because what I've done is I've set my walls on a grid of coordinates, but uh, based on coordinates that increment by 50 each time. And then by using, because 25 is the center of a circle. Um, so the top left will be, uh, my characters will be based on the 50. And by offsetting it by 25 is what I need to, to be able to draw it. All right, so let's make the walls to have an effect. Uh, and now here, this is, you're going to want to pause again to do this. We're going to need a function. The easiest way to do this will be as we move. No way it goes to the middle up. If Pac-Man Y is equal to Ghost, oh, I'm going to keep thinking about that anyway. Um, he's not moving up at all. Oh, now he is. Pac-Man Y. Is less than the ghost y, which it is. Ghost y equals ghost d minus 50. Now I'm going to have to ponder that one. I think it's because of the x. What's going on there? Um, anyway, let's do the walls. So yes, the easiest way for doing these walls is going to be let's because everything's offset by twenty five. Let's look whatever direction I'm wanting to move in. Let's look twenty five pixels ahead of where I am in the direction that I want to move, and if that color of that pixel is black then I cannot move in that direction. Right, that's the easiest way. Otherwise, we could uh, program in, uh, set, set up some program, uh, programming to, uh, with a whole bunch of variables of the, all the coordinates of the walls and check against all of those. The easiest way at the moment, because the only thing that was black is the walls, is let's check to see if, if color that's 25 pixels in the direction we're moving is black. And if it is, don't go there. All right, so the way we're going to do this, you need to write this function. Okay, now it spills over in this line. So, uh, var pixel equals document dot get elements by tag name. Open round bracket. Open quote. Canvas all in lowercase. Close double the quote. Close the double quote. Close the round bracket. Open a square bracket. Zero. Close square bracket. Dot. Get context, open round bracket, open quote, 2D, lowercase on the D, close the double quote, close the round bracket, dot, get image data, open round bracket, X, comma, Y, comma, 1, comma, 1, close the round bracket, dot, data semicolon all right so that's quite a long line uh, i think i can do this for you oh yes we can look at that there you go copy this function out as is pause the video unpause it when you're ready to continue okay let's move this back you've got your get pixel function now so for now just know that this function works all right 
we don't need to worry about the complexity that was involved in it yet. That is way down the track. For now, uh, basically we put it, provide an X and a Y position to this function and it will give us the color code of that pixel in question. So in our moving of Pac-Man, all right, let's come back up here. If, so let's open the if and open the curly braces, okay. If get the pixel of Pac-Man X minus 25, because we are moving left, so we want to go 25 um, less on the X, uh, and Pac-Man Y says we're not changing our Y value at all. If this does not equal, okay, exclamation equals means does not equal, and the color, we, need, we can't just write the word black, because JavaScript, as soon as we use things like black, it actually converts it into a color code. So we need to use the codes, because uh, that's what we will get from the getPixel function. So the color code for black is the hashtag and six zeros. If the color is not equal to black, let's cut and paste this line in here. All right. We now have something that should stop us from moving left if there's a wall in the way. Excellent. Okay, down here, it'll let me move left, but not left here. All right. So we now need to do the same to moving up, right, and down. So I am just going to copy this here. We need the closing brace. Oops, not there, there. Okay, let's indent these lines. And now we just need to update these things. So this one is for moving up. So the X coordinate doesn't change, but the Y coordinate can be minus 25. This one is for moving right, so X coordinate is looking to increase. And this one is for moving down, so X doesn't change, but Y does. That's up 25. And now I should, my Pac-Man is trapped based upon the walls. Now we haven't trapped the ghost, even though the ghost isn't behaving itself quite right at the moment. The ghost wasn't doing that on my practice one. <laughs> the ghost just left the course. <laughs> oh dear, okay. It's really got me a little bit perplexed what's going on with this ghost. So I need to keep figuring it out. But while we're doing that, let's add some food. And right, let's look at our two blue list. We're not drawing Pac-Man, we're drawing the ghost, we're moving the Pac-Man, we're moving the ghost. Even though we need to fix it, we've got some walls. Okay, we need to do some food. Alright, I promised you that arrays were coming, and so here they are. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so let's draw some, let's create another function for drawing food. Okay, so I have, uh, there's a few different ways of doing this. Um, Because the food needs to get eaten, so we need to we need to record if the food has been eaten. So basically, we need lots of dots, and if Pac-Man moves over the dot, we need to stop drawing that dot. So var food square brackets for an array. So if we have a dot every 50 pixels or so. That should give us about 100 dots to deal with, 10 rows by 10 columns worth of food. So let's just make the number one be the food exists, the number zero be the food doesn't exist. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, is that right? <laughs> 
Let me check my food. Four, five, six, three, four. Okay, so there's ten pieces of food in here. And I'm going to now start doing some copy and pasting. So copy that, comma, paste, comma, paste, that's 30, comma, paste, that's 40, comma, paste, 50, comma, paste, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. All right. In a draw food, let's use a for loop, for, I is equal to zero. Now, when computers count, computers count starting with zero. So, the first item in the array is zero. And the second one is one. And that's two, three, four. So zero to 99 rather than one to 100. Okay. Uh, we will loop until food.length, right, the size of the array and i is equal to i plus one at the end of each increment. Okay, so every time we draw a piece of food, uh, let's create a little x and y variable that keeps track of where we are for us. Uh, so x is equal to 25, y is also gonna be equal to 25. All right, uh, and our food is just going to be a little circle. Okay, at that x and y coordinate, a radius of two, we'll make it black. Okay, so if in our loop now, after we draw the walls, let's tell it to draw the food. We should have a whole pile of, have one dot. <laughs> because, okay, so what we have here, if we're drawing, there's actually 100 dots there. What we need is, every time we've drawn one, let's, x is equal to x plus 50. Okay, now they're heading off. So if x is bigger than 500, and x is back to 25, and we will increase the y value by 50. Okay, we have 100 dots. All right. Very good. Hmm. Okay, now, how do we eat these dots? We've created this array, but we're not actually doing anything with it yet. All right, so let's just do here. If food for the ith number, so whatever number this is, as we're looping through all the pieces of food, if it is equal to one, okay, so double equal sign means uh, we're checking for if there's a match. A single equal sign means we are performing a calculation. All right, so comparisons or matches, Calculations or assignment, okay, assigning a value. All right, so if it equals one, that's when we want to draw the circle. All right, so we still have 100 dots, but if I was to come up here to my array, and let's say change the second one to a zero, okay, that one has, notice that one circle has, one food item has disappeared. Okay, and if I change this one over here, and that fourth one also disappears. And set them back to ones. So what we need to do is, as our Pac-Man character moves around the screen, he needs to be setting them to zero to make the food disappear. All right. So as we move our Pac-Man, so that's down here. Move. Pac-Man, okay. So wherever we've moved to, we need to work out what the, what the number of that piece of food is, and if it is, uh, and we need to set it to zero, basically. And we don't really need to check to see if it is set to one, because if it's already gone, if it's already zero, and we set it to zero, well, nothing's changed. So we can just manually, you know, we do this 
always set it to zero and that's not going to break it and bother us. All right, so how do we work out what the food number is uh, of wherever we have landed? So, all right, so the food numbers start at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so we can, if we divide our food number by, well, sorry, if we take our x position, all right, and that increases by 50 for every piece of food. So if we subtract the 25 off of it, and then divide by 50, that will give us a number from 0 to 10 based upon the x coordinate. All right, so, uh, so let's just call this uh, food X. Uh, and so Pac-Man's X minus 25. All right, so think about this first piece of food. If we're here, we're minus 25, we get a zero. And that tells us what we need, fantastic. If we're at this one, in the x position is 75, we're minus 25 to 50. So if we divide this number by the 50, that will give us a 1. Uh, and what's this one? 125 minus the 25 gives us 100, divided by 50 gives us 2, which is right. So 0, 1, 2. Okay, so divide this in by 25, and we've got an x value for the food. The same pretty well happens with the y's, except that each of them is worth 10. So food y right, is Pac-Man's y minus 25 divided by 50. Uh, but that's worth 10 because uh, this is an increase in y increases our food number by 10. So you can do that. Okay, so the uh, real food number <laughs> is food x plus food y. And then we just say food, real food number, <laughs> that's a stupid variable now, anyway, is equal to zero. And if I've done this right in my head, go that's working a treat you notice it left the first dot because we've actually got the calculations happening after we move rather than before we move all right so we can move about and our ghost is still behaving a bit wonky but I'm eating the food <laughs> my ghost isn't killing me and he's heading outside the border All right, so let's get killed by this Pac-Man. And then we're pretty well done other than fixing up the wonky ghost. So, if, let's see, to test if we are dead. No, it's just in here. If Pac-Man X is the same as Ghost X. Okay, if Pac Man Y is the same as Ghost Y, then we want to clear those two, two intervals, stop the timers. And put out a message to the screen saying the game is over because you last. Pac-Man be dead. You died. Uh, we'll plonk that in about the middle of the screen somewhere. Let's make it red. And that should... Yes, you died. Oh, there we go. He actually chased us. <laughs> um, 
Uh, let's move into Peony. Now, there's something actually going on. Um, now, we haven't made the ghost subject to the walls. We've only made Pac-Man subject to the walls. But I think that's good enough for now as a stopping point. Ghosts are infamous for moving through walls anyway, really, aren't they? Uh, just not the ones in the, the Pac-Man game. But for today's version, our ghost can move through walls and he can move a little silly because, you know, he's dead, he's a ghost. So he's going to move silly. Uh, but it's, find out what the error is. There's some kind of glitch in my code about um, for the ghost moving. And uh, I'm sure you can figure it out. Or maybe you want to have a go at adding a second ghost. Have one come in from the opposing corner, chasing Pac-Man down in two different directions. See how much of the food you can eat before the Pac-Man chases you. That's probably one thing we do need to quickly add is a score. Score equals zero. And every time we eat a piece of food, Ah, so that's why we do need to check if the food is one or not. If food, real food number, is one, then score is equal to score plus one. And then when we die, we can print out score. So uh, where was that? That was up here. Control the texts. Do, do, do. Score plus score, and we just increase this y value a bit. Okay, let's see how we go. Let's eat some food. Do, 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 do. Let's get killed. Score of 30. There you go. All right, well, there's a basic kind of Pac Man game. Like I said, we'll improve the graphics uh, when we're not encoding with Chrome anymore, and we'll also add background music and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, but for now, Coding with Chrome, this uh, learning JavaScript, making a Pac-Man game. This is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.